Welcome to Digital Asset News, or Dan for short. My name is Rob, and today what I want to do is uh, bring back Alan Sokolitsky. He's the Chief Financial Officer for Masterworks, and we're here to talk about just the nuts and bolts of Masterworks. Alan, thanks for coming back again to answer some questions. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. All right. So there's been a little bit of grumblings, uh, especially with the, uh, <laughs> the issue with trust, especially in our markets. Yeah. Which spills over to other parts. So they're going to go over just the basics. First of all, what's Masterworks and why diversification? Yeah. Second of all, we go through proof of reserves. We have some kind of proof of art, meaning that uh, the things that you have bought as far as our pieces, how do we know such things? Also, 20% fee upon sale seems kind of cheap or kind of steep. And then lastly, how does the secondary markets work? So the first things first, Alan, just basically people have never heard of you or what's going on. What is Masterworks? Yep. So. Work? Masterworks is uh, it's basically the first company to make multi-million dollar works of art, so paintings, available to invest in on a fractional basis. So you can buy shares in a Banksy, a Basquiat, a Warhol, all the major artists. Right, um, right. You can come to our website, you sign up for an account, um, and ultimately you can become a partial owner in, in one of these multi-million dollar paintings Somewhat along the lines of how if you buy shares of stock on the stock market, you're kind of a partial owner of a company. It is somewhat along those lines. There are a lot of differences, but nevertheless, the idea of being a partial owner is pretty much the same. Um, you know, the art market, it's a nearly $2 trillion asset class. So we're not talking yeah. about something small. We're talking about something pretty gigantic. We yeah. see it around us in museums everywhere. And it's a, it's a really great diversifier for a portfolio, uncorrelated and we think a lot of investors should consider it. Yeah, it's, it's something to consider. And this is just to get it through everybody's everybody's head perfectly, is that it's not about getting into Masterworks and putting your entire life savings. It is no. a small diversification. This is mine right here. I got mostly in cash and real estate. But Masterworks, I've you know allocated a little bit to it. I think that's kind of how I would like to do things. It might be different for everybody else. But yep. In this day and age, I mean, look, the S&P 500, today is December 22nd, 2022. And we're looking at almost a 20% drop uh, this year alone in S&P 500. So if you're investing in S&P 500 and just saying, set it and forget it, it's kind of hurting right now. Same thing with the NASDAQ, down 32%. And let's not forget our market itself. We're down market cap wise, 63% year over date. And that is not to include, or that actually includes everything. But if you're in a specific altcoin, you're hurting even more so. So again, Masterworks, how it worked for me, I called them up and I said, hey, I'm looking to invest into this. Tell me what it's all about. It took them between 30 and 45 minutes to get it through my head, what it actually was. They answered all my questions and they told me very specifically, Rob, the things that you want to do does not equal to what I just talked to the last person and the person before that. And they made it very crystal clear of what my goals could be, what I told them and what they should or could do with masterwork so again if you're just thinking about this or this is the first time you heard it this is not the only place you can get answers before you can even invest you have to talk to these guys and just to make sure if it's right for you and i'll be honest with you uh, i've had other uh, subscribers say hey they told me it wasn't for me and that's fine and i i would i would really emphasize that we're we're basically um i'm not necessarily going to say we're the only platform that does this but i'm pretty sure most platforms do not do this which is to say you can't actually just sign up on our website and automatically make an art investment. We, we actually don't allow any investors to invest in art until they've actually spoken to someone uh, from our membership team, because we actually take risk management and our clients' wealth very seriously. So we ultimately work with all of our clients to determine what is the appropriate allocation to art for your portfolio and to be honest with you, in a lot of cases, we actually guide investors to have smaller allocations relative to what they might have thought they should invest. So we're probably one of the only platforms, if not the only platform, that actually is willing to do something like that, guiding you to invest less than you might have thought you should. Yeah, sounds good. So let's <clears throat> let's do this. Let's get into the whole trust aspect. So the first thing yeah. is this. We've got an issue here in crypto world, which is people say, I've got Bitcoin, I've got Ethereum on my exchanges, and all of a sudden, poof, it's not there. That's called yep. proof of reserves, proof of liabilities. How do we know, Alan, for everything with Masterworks that you guys have purchased the art? You haven't just like said, hey, we've got a Banksy and here yep. it is. How do we know? Yeah. So, you know, this this actually in some ways takes us back to early days in Masterworks history, because 
when we were first trying to figure out what is the best way for us to even fractionalize the paintings in the first place, meaning how should we go about making them available on a fractional basis, um, the route that we took, which is to have every offering qualified by the SEC and have all the document documentation on the SEC, that wasn't the only option. Um, mm -hmm. We had actually considered using blockchain but what, what we quickly realized is because a lot of investors were sort of learning about art for the first time, the way that we wanted to make information available about all of our offerings was a way that would be as public and as transparent as humanly possible to give investors a lot of confidence in what we were doing. So that's a lot of the reason why we actually decided we are going to securitize these paintings. We're going to make them public vehicles with the Securities and Exchange Commission. So... You can literally go, you can either go to our website where you'll see a link for every single painting. There is a link that will take you directly to the SEC's website and you will get an extraordinarily lengthy document well, this is that true. is going to talk about everything related to that particular painting. It's going to give you a history of the artist, a history of the painting, um, who owned the painting before and who owned the painting before that person. It, it, it's literally going to lay out in exhaustive detail, anything and everything that you would want to know. And again, the reason why we wanted to do this through the Securities and Exchange Commission is because we knew that because this is an investment that a lot of investors have not thought about before, we need to do it in a way that is most likely to give investors the maximum amount of trust. And, and that's why we decided to do it this way. Gotcha. Okay. So that helps out a little bit with the transparency part. Let's talk about this one. 20% fees. Now, when I heard about this and I talked to, to the guys over there, like, just so you know, and they're very upfront, like, this is going to be 20% fees. They laid it all out for me, but it's been over a year. I purchased a Banksy, a Banksy and a Basquiat, and I can't remember exactly how this all works. So, Alan, could you break it down for us? Because some people would say, why don't I just invest into something uh, like just put it all into crypto? Because yep. you know, crypto goes up 100%. It also goes down 99% sometimes. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, when it comes to the fees, um, you know, for alternative investments, and let's just even put art aside. Um, mm -hmm. If if some of your uh, uh, if some of your viewers invest in other alternative investments, whether it's private equity or hedge funds or others along those lines, the pretty standard management fees and performance fees for alternative investments in the industry is, let's say, one and a half percent to two percent management fee and twenty percent of profits. Mm -hmm. uh, our business, we are basically, we think very much uh, uh, average or even slightly below. We're actually at one and a half percent management fee okay. and 20 percent profits. So we think we're pretty much in the, right in the ballpark with other, other alternative investments. That 20 percent on profits, I just want to be clear what that specifically refers to, because let's just say in general, I can totally imagine that somebody who just hears the number 20 percent fee that on its own is probably a little bit terrifying to hear, but right. that's a fee on profits. So as an example, let's say we have a painting that we make available for a million dollars. And let's say a few years go by, we sell the painting for $2 million. That means there has been a million dollars in profit, right? It went from one to two. That means a million dollars in profit. So 200,000 of that would go to us and 800,000 of that goes to investors. And the reason why investors are so interested in having asset managers who actually have a fee on profits and investors actually want managers to charge a fee on profits is yeah. because it is probably the biggest and strongest form of incentive that you can give an investment manager to do a good job with what they're doing. Because they know that the more they are able to generate in terms of performance, that means that they'll be able to generate more for their investors as well as generate more for themselves. You actually want that. Yeah, I can. Uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, with with paying those types of prices, and then like we just took a look at the at the track record, uh, not a little bit ago, but we yeah. can see that um, so far. I mean, <clears throat> annualized profits themselves are looking. I mean, pretty uh, reasonable. Uh, as far as like the, the pennies that are sold, 33% yep. net of all costs and fees, 27, yep. Gillum, condo, so on and so forth. Yep. So yeah, I think it's just something to say that this is all after, you know, uh, everything. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's really that's one of the important considerations. I, I think a lot of investors, if you if you focus too much on the fees alone, almost like like in a vacuum, yeah. um, you sort of lose sight of of what's, I think, significantly more important, which is, is the performance that the manager generating is that performance still really good after you pay the fees? And I think what the performance of our platform has shown, I mean, we've, we've sold paintings, you know, you just ran through some of the example. We've sold paintings for that had net returns, meaning after fees of over 30%. There have been a number over 25%, a number over 20. So I think at the end of the day, what it goes to show is if you are able to generate those types of performance numbers, especially in the market we're in today, that's really what matters most. And, you know, it, it Sometimes I, I kind of struggle bringing up the performance of stocks and bonds this year because, you know, it has been challenging and it's been challenging for a lot of investors portfolios. But it does, in a way, highlight one of the points I've been trying to make about fees, which is, you know, to invest in stocks these days, the, ex the fees you're going to pay are effectively zero. I mean, they're not literally zero, but they're close to zero. But right. despite the fact that you're paying close to zero, the stock market this year is still down nearly 20 percent. With bonds, you're also paying close to zero in terms of fees, but bonds are down over 10% this year too. So I guess it's all just a way of saying it's important to look at fees, but you right. need to give those fees some context. What's the performance you're getting for the fees? Yeah, that's a big thing. And that would <clears throat> actually would lead me up to, to the next point here. And it'll kind of roll into this is the secondary markets. And <clears throat> before I roll into that, I would just say that, uh, now we talked about sharp ratios before. I'm not going to do it here again. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there'll be a link in the description. You can check out what Alan talks about sharp ratios, but anything above one is doing pretty good. And 1.5 to almost two is utterly incredible. And we yeah. can see sharp ratios being quite high. But on top of that, there's this one little piece here I want to make mention. Less than 2.4% of artworks reviewed by Masterworks actually gets bought up and offered to persons. So artist market analyzed 7,100, selected 74. They were offered 5677, and this is what they have. So again, it's not like they get every single one out there. They're trying to get the best because they're trying to do give us a great return and go from there. That, so, that's that's the idea. I, I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt, but like it, no. it's so important to emphasize this because the truth is we've had several paintings over the last few months. These are several multi-million dollar paintings that actually sold out in 15 minutes. So if you were to take that into consideration and and you would probably very quickly realize wait a minute if they have paintings that sell out in 15 minutes they probably should want to buy up as many paintings as they possibly can and make those available because there's so much demand for what they're doing however we would be throwing the investment process entirely out the window if we actually decided to do that we are entirely focused on generating attractive performance for our investors and that requires being extremely selective. And if that means that our paintings sell out in 15 minutes and we're not just buying anything and everything under the sun, then so be it because we are committed to generating attractive performance. So, and then this will be leading to the next part about liquidity and the last question. So when we talk about these holds, because, you know, in, in our space, you can see like 100, 200% you know, uh, increase in price yeah. in a week. It's just, that's just the bench of the beast. Yep. However, here, I mean, we're talking about year long holds, yep. two, three, five yep. year type of yep. thing, right, Alan? Yep. Okay. The, uh, the guidance that I give investors all the time is to expect three to seven years, roughly. Okay. Um, that would be five years on average. Uh, I also point out though, that there's some irony when I say that, because most of the paintings that we've actually sold so far were opportunistic sales in the sense that we were approached and we were given very attractive offers for the paintings. So we decided to sell them sooner than our anticipated three to seven year time frame. Most of them actually got sold at two years. However, I'm always trying to sort of advise and caution investors that when you go into this, expect it to be three to seven. Doesn't mean it can't be shorter, but expect it to be three to seven. The long game. And then yep. the question that, that people get that ask me, like, well, what happens, Rob, for it? Because this is a very e-liquid market. Yep. I mean, it really is. So what happens if I need to get money out? I Something happens and whatnot. Yep. But there's a secondary market. And here, this is my account itself. If I go over to trading on the very top, from what I remember you telling me, Alan, it's after three months after 
all of the shares have been purchased by yep. the consumer or by the retail market once they're all totally sold out yep. th three months from then then these shares these fractionalized shares of fine art get put on your secondary market and you can trade if you so need to so i'm gonna look at my bank see exit the gift shop that's mine so I bought it for $20 per share. Right now it's at a whopping $19.98. I'm okay. If something happens to me and I liquidate, okay, I liquidate. But it's there for me. Is there something I'm missing out? Uh, you actually just explained it exactly the way that I would have explained it. Um, you can see that uh, you know there was that button on the right uh, just now on the screen that uh, said you don't have a Templum account sign up. So Templum is basically the, the um, it's a firm that we partnered with to sort of automate the trading that takes place on the secondary market. Um, that's sort of been uh, sort of a big advance for our business. Uh, we were very forward thinking when we first started Masterworks several years ago in even having a secondary market in the first place. But, you know, admittedly, that secondary market, it operated kind of like a bulletin board. There was not a lot yeah. of automation. So, yes, it functioned. But you would imagine that something in this day and age should function a lot more efficiently than than it did. So exactly. we've, we've had, you know, now we have this partner, you sign up for an account um, and basically there's a lot more automation that happens in the buying and selling. So think of it as, you know, a natural sort of progression and improvement in our business. And we are always looking to improve, uh, improve our business to every extent possible. Excellent. Alan, thanks again for stopping by. Everybody, if you're looking for more information, we did a deep dive into this. There's a link in the description. It looks just like this. And underneath there where it says deep dive video, you can go more in depth also to sign up or just to talk to the people over at Masterworks like we talked about in the beginning. You can do so, but just be aware it's going to be like a 30 to 45 minute conversation just like what I had. So, Alan, I appreciate it. you stopping by. Thanks so much for having me.